First, I would just like to, uh, again, just, just and like I said to the team, these guys, man, they, they, uh, they, they, they're, they're special. Uh, they're a special group of guys. They're a special group of men. Um, and I just love everything about the group that, that we had. And, and I said it, and I told these guys, I said it every time I got in front of the mic, um, that I would not rather go into any other, into this fight with any other group of, any other group of guys. Um, whether it be players and coaches and strength staff, from but everybody a part of this program, and um, I'm just really appreciative of of the job that they've done. You got truly, you have everything right now, telling these guys not to go out there during this time um, and give it all that they have, and um, they were able to block out everything and be able to kind of put the forefront of themselves, the team, uh, the goals that they've had as a team, and um, I'm just I'm just really really pleased with those guys. Got to credit Oklahoma. Um, guys did a really good job um, of, of, of taking advantage of anything that we gave them. Uh, obviously, man, they're a talented team. Um, they're well coached. Um, those guys did a good job. That did a good enough job to be able to win the game, and, and uh, that, that, that goes to a credit to them and the scheme and everything else that they put forward and put those guys in position to be able to take advantage um, of anything that we gave those guys. So, um, like I said, man, not, 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 not negating the fact that, that those guys did a good job. I felt like we helped them out at times as well, but, um, I mean, those guys earned it. Those guys earned it, and, and uh, got to give credit to those guys as well, man. So, uh, it really hurts. Um, as, as well as we played and everything else in the second half, I mean, it's not a, and it's, it's not a, it's not a consolation prize. You know, you come here in order to win the game, and it hurts like hell when you don't. So, um, right now, that's where we are. And, and uh, but again, man, I appreciate these seniors. I appreciate everybody uh, and the job that they did throughout this entire bowl prep. Uh, Process and uh, I mean, just just really really pleased with these guys and I love everything about them. So, with that, I'll open up questions. Yeah, everybody, raise hand, please. The mic holders will come to you, and when you ask questions, directed at one player or the coach at a single time, please. In the front left, Brian. Just any initial word on the severity of the injuries to Noah, Scoop, and Dante? Uh, nothing. Uh, no, no, nothing real. Uh, nothing real serious on any one of the fronts. I feel. I think Scoop has a shoulder. Uh, Noah got taken out for concussion symptoms. Um, and then who else did you ask about? And Dante, and Dante uh, yeah, same. Dante had a lower lower leg extremity uh, that 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 they want to reevaluate and everything else. And anything else was really just uh, bumps and bruises associated with play. Um, so, but though, but as far as those, as far as those, um, nothing real serious. Nothing um, that I don't feel like. Uh, you know, we'll keep those guys out of a good off season or anything else. Orange front. Hey, Brian, just uh, what did you say to the team at, uh, at half being down 33? Because, you know, it was definitely different energy and everything after the second half. Well, I feel like, uh, you know, it's, it's – you can't credit it to me. I, I'm not out there playing, um, you know. So, I mean, it's these guys. Uh, you know, the only thing I said to those guys were uh, – Hey man, we we've come too far to really let a bad half kind of define us. So at the end of the day, um, there's no there's no one play that that you can that you can run that get you out of a thirty to three deficit. Um, so we only thing we can do is go out there and fight our ass off one play at a time. And um, I mean, and go out there and, and keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And you know, those guys, uh, like I said, it's, it it wasn't just me. I mean, those guys out there, man, they believed in each other that they can go out there and get that done. Um, and so, uh, I mean, it, it, at the end of the day, it's those guys, man, that need all the credit, not not me. Back in the gray shirt. Brian, or along those lines, with all the guys that were out for various injuries and other guys going out, what can you say about this team's fight to, to never give up? Because anyone could have understood if they did, yeah. and, and they didn't. Well, that's, not how, that's, not, that's not what we do. Um, that's, that's about as simple of an answer as I can give you. Um, that's not what we do. Um, there is no there, – there, there is nothing um, – I mean, we, we feel like there's nothing that we can't overcome as a, as a group. Uh, regardless of who's here, regardless of who's there, regardless of, you know, next man up, regardless of what, what deficit, what situation, what turnover, it doesn't matter. It doesn't feel like there's, any, it doesn't feel like there's anything that's going to stop us from going out there and, and giving, a, giving, a, giving our all. So um, that's just really how we're made up. Uh, but, again, it, it, really, it really comes from a belief of the people in the locker room, um, in each other. Um, that those guys knew, man, that, that there was no quit in anybody. Um, they knew the guy next to them wasn't going to quit. They knew their coaches weren't going to quit. 
Um, they knew, shoot, man, the trainers and everybody else weren't going to quit. And so it makes it really easy to be able to fight for one another when that's the case. Back. Brian, what are your thoughts on the way the young wide receivers played tonight? Yeah, uh, you know, proud of those guys. Um, and then I, I thought we started off a little uh, – a little off in the sense of, I mean, we, I felt like there were some balls that we could have handled that, that were off target a little bit. Um, and that's the receiver's job to be able to handle it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like we were inconsistent at first being able to do that. I felt like those guys settled in because it's, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a young group of guys that, you know, a lot, all of those guys are playing different spots, playing different, you know, playing a lot more, playing, you know what I mean? But um, that, that's no excuse, um, you know. But at the end of the day, those guys came in there, man, and did a really good job of, of just keep fighting. You know, doing what their coach should do, going out there and, and making those plays and, um, and and doing their job. But not just them, but everybody, you know, everybody. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm proud of them, but I'm proud of everybody over there in that locker room for doing that as well. Question back and then front. Right there. That's it. Uh, Anthony, what was the what were the big struggles for you in the first half, and how were you guys able to turn it around on offense in the second half? Um, I would just say we were just shooting ourselves in the foot uh, from time to time. Uh, credit to Oklahoma, they had certain uh, calls on defense that were made for how we were trying to attack them. Um, but just in the first half, we were we were really just getting off schedule and um, basically just hindering ourselves from continuing to progress in our in our drives and finish them so front left for Jordan and Verone they scored on eight straight possessions and we talked before the game about the volume of guys you built down I know the two of you are going to say next man up because that's that's the mantra around here but when Noah goes down and Dante goes down and Scoop goes down and it adds to what you're already down how difficult was it to get off the field and and why was it such a struggle tonight? Was it just the depth above all? I mean, not discrediting Oklahoma, but was depth the big issue? Um, no, I don't think depth's ever really an issue. I mean, kind of like you said, it's always been our mantra is next man up. I mean, injuries are part of football. I mean, you kind of have to deal with them, whether it's on the fly or you have it beforehand, no beforehand. But I mean, credit to Oklahoma. They, they played a really good, or a good game on offense as a whole, and we struggled in the first half. I think we improved a lot in the second half uh, from a defense standpoint as a whole. But I mean, credit to Oklahoma. They did their thing tonight. Thank you, Jordan. Verone? Um, I would say the same thing. Uh, I think that Jeff Bassa and Nate did a good job. And the guys who haven't played as much this year, they all stepped up. And Oklahoma did a good job today. They really did. I mean, Caleb Williams, phenomenal player, different rotation of running backs. They did a good job. But for the most part, I think we did a lot better in the second half. And I think, you know, just as the game goes on, making those adjustments and just, we just need a one stop. If we have more time, I feel like. We just need more time, and that's just how football is. Second row, Orange. Verone, uh, I know you talked about after the Pac-12 championship how you were disappointed, obviously, with the uh, way things went and wanted to make amends for the bowl game. Uh, obviously, not the way you want to end the season, but uh, what is the future lie for you and just kind of how the decision uh, in regards to that goes about? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I would say that, you know, that feeling after – the Pac-12 championship, we didn't like it. And this one is a little different because we did fight hard in that second half. And like I said, we were <laughs> we were close. We were close. A lot of people thought we weren't going to be able to come back. We came back out there and fought. And I want to give BMAC credit because he brought that fire to the locker room and we trusted him. It's, it's, it's hard to come in, coaches leave, but Coach BMAC got us right. We prepared right. And we didn't start off well, but we continued to fight and fight and fight. And we just need a little bit more time. And then in regards to my future, um, i am talking with my family about that kind of these next few days and weeks. So that's just something that's out there. So Michelle, front left. Just to follow with that, Verone, because underclassmen like yourself have a little bit of a different deadline than the guys like Travis and whatnot because they have till February. You have like three weeks. Are you enrolled in class on Monday? Will you be back in Eugene at that point? And just give us through, like, are you going to take up until the January 17th deadline or is this something the next couple of days? Um, I'm enrolled in classes. Um, that's just because I enrolled for classes a while ago. Cause, but um, get my body back, talk to my family, talk to my coaches, Coach Lanning and the new staff and just things like that. So just kind of taking my time. Isaac, back row. 
Uh, for Jordan and Anthony, uh, you guys' this final game in, in an Oregon uniform, what are you going to remember most about your time here, and what does the future look for, for each of you guys on, on each of your sides of the ball? Um, yeah, obviously I started out at Boise State, but I mean, my time here has been just, I, I've loved every moment of it. I mean, they took me in with open arms from the first day I got here, and um, I like to give credit to Coach BMAC. I really appreciate him for this whole thing. Uh, like, kind of like Verone said, a lot of coaches up and leave, and I think BMAC did a, a tremendous job with this with this group. Um, as for my plans, I mean, I'm going to go and try and train for Pro Day and get to the NFL, um, but yeah. Thank you, Jordan. <clears throat> Uh, I would say just my time here at Oregon has, to me, um, has been very special. Um, coming from Boston College all the way out here, they opened, they welcomed me with open arms. And I would say through everything that happened this year, uh, last year without them, I wouldn't be here. Um, they're my family. I love them. Uh, I appreciate everything about them, especially Coach BMAC for keeping keeping the staff around. Um, because I know for a fact uh, that in times like this, a staff wouldn't stay together um, just to coach a bowl game. And I, I really appreciate them for staying, and um, I hope everybody else appreciates what they've done um, because they didn't have to. Um, but I, I really think they, they stood on their word and just really being here for us. Um, and that's that's special. That's something that that you don't usually get out of a whole bunch of coaches. Um, and I just say my time here was just incredible. I can't can't even complain. Any final questions in the black one, middle? Hey, Veron, you you're from around here. Uh, grew up around the DFW area. Game notwithstanding, what was it like for you to play against, you know, guys that you grew up against and, and trained with throughout your whole life? Because being in Pac-12, you don't get to do that on a week-in and week-out basis. Um, it was a lot of fun. I would say, you know, that first half wasn't as fun, but that second half was a lot of fun. And we, we kind of showed that. And to play against, you know, Oklahoma, I got recruited by Oklahoma pretty hard. Um, I'm familiar with Coach Stoops, somebody I grew up kind of talking to when I was even getting recruited. So it was, it was really fun to play against those guys. And... It just brings more competitive fire to me. I'm a competitor. And, you know, to do it with the guys next to me who we've ble sweat, bleed, done everything together, made it even more fun because I came out to Oregon to do things like this. I wanted to be different. I wanted to be innovative, and that's why I came up here. So it was fun. Final question in front. Maybe just two quick things. One, your parents said you're going to go home to New Jersey for a few days before starting training, going off to Orlando for the Hula Bowl. Have you picked out where you'll be training yet in the interim? And secondly, now that the season's over, I know you didn't want to talk about it at Utah, but again, in the big picture, how banged up were you? We knew the hand, we knew the ankle. Against Stony Brook, there was something upper body. It gives context for folks because you don't want to talk about it during the season. Coaches don't want to talk about it, but now that it's over, how much did you play through? Um, shit. Excuse my language, but <laughs> I played through a lot. Um, it was hard, but like I said, without them, I wouldn't keep going. Um, it hurts uh, just to play through everything that I've been through. Um, and yeah, whether it was the hand, my foot, knee, didn't really matter. I didn't care because um, it was all for them. Like I said, they're my family. I love them. I wouldn't do anything. Um, I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't have stopped playing just because of that. Um, there wasn't a nick if, if it was. There's a difference between being hurt and being injured. Um, was I playing on that borderline? Probably. Um, but I, for them, I'd give my body up. I don't care. Um, and as far as training, um, I would just say I got to talk to my parents. Um, and you'll, you'll end up seeing where I'm, I'm training at uh, in a few days. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, players. We appreciate you.